never say I've been on my ground for seven days Need a race, swear to God I'll never be the same TBH, this the TBH Yeah, uh, CBA Never say I've been on my ground for seven days Need a race, swear to God I'll never be the same TBH, this the TBH Yeah, 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 yeah I pull up walking on your status If you wanna talk, then call me later, goddamn I've been on my ground just like yeah, I'm creative. Catch a vibe, I catch a vibe. I'm on a piece like it's a crime. Yeah, it's a crime. I'm always working overtime. Yeah, overtime. Money does like and I harm. What's in my prime? Breaking it down. Calling me now. They want to clout. I wouldn't doubt. Call like a route. I like a spout. Dress like a drought. I'm gone and I'm out. All right, what is up, YouTube? Sorry I haven't posted in a while, but I've got a uh, fresh one for you guys today and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I'm going to be reacting to the carnivore camaraderie debate, the uh, infinite, infamous carnivore camaraderie debate between the nutrivore and uh, carnivore camaraderie. Um, it's infamous because uh, carnivore camaraderie apparently got smashed really bad and uh, albeit consenting, uh, sorry, excuse me, not albeit, but um, although he consented in the video itself to being recorded as well as consented over email to the video being shared to audiences, uh, he rescinded that consent and uh, filed a privacy complaint um, because Nick posted the video. So this has drawn a lot of attention to it. Apparently it's been uh, <clears throat> put on blast by Joey Carbstrong, by big names like Joey Carbstrong and Vegan Gains. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, if you go onto Vegan Gains channel, you can find that video. I didn't know Joey Carbstrong had put it on blast, but apparently he did as well. Uh, yeah, I've been told that Humane Slaughter is an undersell. I've been told that it was just absolutely brutal. Uh, Nick was just on stream today talking about how he actually feels bad posting it because he, like, the carnivore camaraderie dude just got wrecked so badly it's like it's like secondhand embarrassment but yeah so this one should be a good one guys i'm excited and uh yeah let's crack a fresh one and get into it cheers now I was able to catch bits and pieces of this debate when it uh, when it went live uh, when it was live happening uh, in person <clears throat> or sorry not in person but before while it was being recorded excuse me so so it was a live debate and uh, but I only caught bits and pieces of it because I was really busy at the time and uh, I was having some technology troubles uh, so I really haven't heard this debate so this would be my first reaction to it but yeah without further ado let's get into it Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. It's been a long time. I apologize that I haven't been as consistent with producing podcasts as I have been in the past. It's just that this ecosystem that I've created for myself takes a lot to maintain, and podcasting is probably one of the most labor-intensive and least lucrative things that I do within my ecosystem. So it's very low on the priority list, but hopefully that'll change in the future. Today I have a special reason to be talking to you on this particular platform, though. I recently had a debate with Carnivore Camaraderie on YouTube that lasted for about an hour and 40 minutes, and it was probably one of my best debate performances. Carnivore Camaraderie was not able to defend his proposition for the entire hour and 40 minutes we were debating, and rather than conceding the proposition, he decided to end the discourse prematurely by terminating the call. So naturally, this was probably pretty embarrassing for him, which I actually don't really care about. My aim is not to embarrass the guy. But he could have spared himself the embarrassment by just conceding the proposition, but he decided not to. Now, prior to the debate, there was a written understanding that there was going to be an audience. Ostensibly, we were recording this to be published because there was explicit mention of an audience having access to it. So, naturally, I was under the assumption that this was going up on YouTube. And additionally, in the recording, you can hear him consent to being recorded. So not only do we have a recording of carnivore camaraderie giving consent to being recorded, 
but we also have written documentation of carnivore camaraderie himself suggesting that this content was going to be made consumable by a third party. I understood that it was going to be recorded. He understood that it was going to be recorded. I understood that an audience was going to see it. He understood that an audience was going to see it. Yet, he filed a privacy claim against the video and had it taken down. Even after giving all of that consent to it being made available and it being recorded. Now, as of this recording, the video is still technically down, but I have submitted an appeal, so we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I will be releasing the debate on this platform. And if by some fluke this gets taken down, I will completely decentralize my entire podcast platform and host it myself independently so that I have dominion over my content. So without further delay, I bring you the debate between Carnivore Camaraderie and myself. Okay, actually, you know what? I just realized I'm putting this video up on YouTube, so <laughs> because of the privacy complaint, unless I want to get mixed up in all of that, um, I'm going to need to watch the censored version, which is posted on YouTube. It's also known as the chip chipmunk version, so I'm going to pull that up real quick. Give me just one sec here. All right, now I've got that loaded up. Uh, if you guys want, I will have the link to this video in the description below, as well as a link to the podcast version. So if you want to listen to the non-chipmunk version without any, um, without any video, then you can check out the podcast, or you can check out the YouTube video, which will um, normally make Nick more money, although I have ads disabled for the sake of our video content. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll just, we'll, I guess, debate the, the efficacy of natural diets, uh, as far as longevity goes, I think, is the best way to do it. Oh, well, I mean, you had given me a proposition, and I figured that's what we were going to be debating. Um, so the proposition that you gave me was the natural human diet is best for ensuring optimal health. Yeah, I think optimal health is, as measured by longevity is probably okay. Um, yeah, what I'd like to defend. Okay, so let me just uh, let me amend that. Uh, best for ensuring, like uh, optimal health, just means longevity. Best for ensuring, like kind of longevity, like like maximum longevity or something. Or, or, or yeah, maximum. Yeah, Longevity. Okay. Yeah, I had a few questions about the proposition just because it just didn't look. It didn't look clear to me. Um, so my my first question is like, what what is the natural human diet like? What? Is yeah, it's it's not clear to me either, and that is the most glaring uh, incoherence. Is what is the natural diet? You know, that would need to be pinned down so that we can actually figure out what he's saying. I mean, um, I, I would say it's it's what we've eaten for the majority of the evolution of of uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. So, like, like I, I guess to put a day on between three hundred fifty thousand years. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me rewind it. Hopefully, it just fixes. So, like, like I. <laughs> I guess to put a date on it between 350,000 years ago and 12,000 years ago. This isn't like offering me like, like any sort of description about what that diet is though. Like what constitutes uh, that diet? Meat, predominantly. So, so wait, so now the proposition is meat is best for ensuring maximum longevity? Well, I'm not necessarily saying, I, I, I want, I'm still on the debate. Um, the, like, the, the, <laughs> okay, sorry about that, y'all. Um, um, maybe we would get... I, I have now fixed the audio issues, and so we won't be having those anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and start again from where we left off, just a little bit behind. 3,000 years ago and 12,000 years ago. 
this isn't like offering you like any sort of description about what that diet is though like what constitutes uh, that diet meat predominantly so so wait so now the proposition is meat is best for ensuring maximum longevity well i'm not necessarily saying i i want i more so want to debate um the, like the, the the aspect of a natural diet like what what that um Maybe we would get into antagonistic platyotropy and things like that. Uh, well, I'm I'm interested in debating the proposition that you agreed to. Right. Yeah. Which... yeah. So, like, first I need to get clarity on what this proposition even means. So, like, now it's reading meat is best for ensuring maximum or maximum longevity. Like, well, in... how would this? How about an, an animal-based diet? So, um, eating predominantly meat. A diet of predominantly meat yeah is that like any permutation of a diet that's predominantly meat so like if it was a diet of like predominantly meat but it also had like poisonous cassava in it would that maximally like <laughs> would that produce maximum longevity like i don't think so so like um i think you just need to be like very specific like what what kind of diet exactly are you talking about um i'm not even gonna say carnivore i just let me think about the best way to make this clear um I, I don't even I don't even see uh, much success in debating the diet itself. Like, oh, no, 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 no. That, that's not what I'm attempting to do. I just want to gain clarity on the proposition. Um, right, like, because the proposition, as stated, is not intelligible to me. Right, like it says the natural human diet is best for ensuring optimal health. I don't know what the heck that means. Right. I don't know what well, that well, means. Well, 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 we 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 already clarified how I'm determining what optimal health optimal means. Optimal health, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, right. So, 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 so the confusion lines and what constitutes an uh, what constitutes a natural diet. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, my my point is more so that, um, de like debating uh, or like talking about what constitutes a, a natural diet doesn't seem relevant when we could actually just talk about the differences between natural and novel diets with regards to antagonist pleiotropy. Now, I'm not here to like, debate that necessarily. I'm here to debate the proposition that you agreed to. Yeah, which is which is natural diet. I mean, that's basically the proposition. Well, the, it's, a, it's a natural diet. The proposition that you are agreeing to, uh, ostensibly, is that the natural human diet is best for ensuring uh, maximum longevity. And what I'm asking is what the natural diet even is. What is that thing? Like, what are you talking about when you say that? Okay, well, how about, how about we just say... Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like he doesn't even know what he's talking about when he says this diet. <laughs> and unfortunately, we're going to have a little bit of ad breaks here because I had to... Because of how it fixed it. And then the rest would be either, uh, like, fruits or vegetables. Okay, so um, a diet of at least 50% meat, where the rest is either meat, fruits, or vegetables. It <laughs> is either meat, fruits, or vegetables. Okay, so a diet of 50% meat, where the rest is either meat, fruit, or vegetables, is best for ensuring maximum longevity. Um, well, can, can, can we actually compare that to something like, um, like best fruit, a diet of at least 50% meat with the rest being meat, fruit, or vegetables relative to, um, a, well, is that implied in the proposition that it's... Yeah, the referentiality is to, to all other diets is built into your proposition because you're saying okay. that it is the best, which means that regardless of the comparator, it will be on top. That's the way yeah. I'm interpreting it. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you say when you say best, like, what do you mean by best exactly? Best for best. ensuring opti like best for ensuring maximum uh, longevity. Like, what do you mean by best right there? I mean that there can't be any other diet that's better, or there isn't any other diet that's better, or like, what what exactly are you meaning by best? Um. There's the yeah the, well I think by best what I'm saying is that and, and yeah any diet that's less than fifty percent meat is not going to be as good as a diet with over fifty percent meat. 
under under any circumstance. That that's that's under what I mean by best. Okay, under any circumstances. Well, actually, no, not not um, not not under not not under any circumstances. But there's th- th- there is no. Mm, no yeah, no, not not under any circumstances. But um, all, so okay, so a diet with fifty five percent meat and the rest being an equal distribution of fruits and vegetables will always be better than a diet with 45% meat with the rest being fruits or vegetables. I don't know how you want to put that into a claim, but th- that's what I mean by best. As in, a diet with less meat, given all other things being the same, is not going to be as good as a diet with more meat and all of the other things being the same up after that threshold of 50%. Okay, so you're saying Uh, just one second, I'm just trying to get clear on this. Uh, that is under 50% meat. So now the proposition is, and we can clear this up if there's any like, grammatical weirdness, because I'm just trying to piece this together on the spot. Um, a diet of at least 50% meat, where the rest is either meat, fruit, or vegetables, will always be better than any diet that is under 50% meat with regards to ensuring maximum longevity. That's it. Um, would you sign off on that? Um, I would also want to know. Um, <clears throat> I would also want to know about. Um, hang on, what was it? Um, would you sign off on that? At least 50% meat, where the rest is either meat, fruit, or vegetables, will always be better than any diet that is under 50% meat with regards to ensuring maximum longevity. That's it. Um, would you sign off on that? Never mind. I don't remember what I was going to say. Um. Oh, sorry about the ads, y'all. Is that is that what you want to get into? Like, what, what, like when you want to do this, I thought you wanted to talk about natural diets, and that that's what your email said. Um, well, sure, whatever that means. I mean, we're trying to get this guy to unpack that, right? <laughs> I mean, I I I just asked you for what proposition you'd be interested in debating. And this is the proposition that you gave me. I'm just trying to gain clarity on this proposition. I thought the proposition is what we were going to be debating. I mean, uh, a proposition is the object. The truth value of a proposition is the object of the debate, and this is the proposition that was on the table. So I assumed that this is what we were going to be debating. Well, in your in your emails, me you said in your debate with Brandon, you claimed you claimed to accept the proposition that eating the natural human diet is basically what's best to ensure optimal health. That's what you said, and you said I'd be comfortable debating that proposition if you'd be comfortable defending it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's, so. I, I take that that's precisely what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're on the same page there. So now the proposition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the debate is about to get underway as soon as we get through clarifying exactly what is meant by the proposition. Is a diet of at least fifty percent meat, where the rest is either fruits or uh, meat, fruit, or vegetables, will always be better than any diet that is under fifty percent meat with regard to ensuring maximum longevity. I guess I guess my issue with this is that, like, in, in the actual debate, we're never going to dive into the intricacies of above or below fifty percent. Like, that's not what we're, we're going to be getting into. That's not where all. that's not where I was planning on taking it. So you're I you guess, can, consider yeah. yourself lucky. <laughs> well, well, which is why I don't, I don't like that being the proposition. So, well, I mean, it, these terms are not clear to me as stated in the original proposition, and this is just how you're unpacking it to me. So, I mean, like, if you don't even sign off on your own proposition, I don't know what the hell there is even to debate. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not that I, that I wouldn't sign off on that. It's that I, I don't think it's a good representation for what's going to be discussed. I think it's unclear or for, for most people. And I'd rather make, cause like for something as debating and national. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of clarifying it. Right. So yeah. Diet versus a novel diet. That, that's, that's very simple. Um, 
Um, so yeah, so like I was interested in debating the proposition, and I mean, like we could we could scrap this clarified proposition and just start fresh with a completely new one if you want to unpack the terms in a different way. Uh, I'm, I'm fine I, with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. let's just scrap the whole thing. So like, what do you mean by optimal health? Um, well, ultimately, that I would still say longevity. Okay. Uh, so okay, and what do you, what do you mean by the natural human diet? Um, well, what can, can I ask? What, what what you would like to debate? Like, how, what? Well, what's what, what's what, 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 what's a proposition that um. Can, can you outline something? Like, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what you would like to get into as far as, you know, sticking with the proposition. Well, I'm, it's not clear to me that the proposition is even intelligible, so it's not clear to me that there is even anything to debate. Right, right, but, but you clearly had some ways that you would like to go about this. You clearly had some topics you want to, to um, touch on, so I'm curious what you want to get into, like, what you would like a pro the proposition to be. I mean, you, you understand my viewpoint, like, you, you, know, you know my viewpoint very well, so... I don't, well, actually. I, I, I think you do, though. Like, I, I no, I mean, well, like, well, well. I, I have better access to my thoughts than you do, no offense. I don't know what the hell your views are, because your views seem incredibly inconsistent to me. I don't know how to, like, pin down what your views are. I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, when I say natural human diet, I, I think I think of mo eating mostly meat. As far as what what else is in there besides the meat, like I I don't really know. I don't really know what to say about that. But I don't think that's worth getting into because we wouldn't get into that anyway. No, I mean it, 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 it's fine. I mean once I have a proposition, I'm I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure exactly where I would go with it. Because here's the thing: um, if you unpack the proposition into, into something that I find not particularly objectionable, then I'll just agree with it. And there's no reason to have a debate. If you can't unpack the proposition, then I'm convinced that you're just gibberating, and then there's no reason to have a debate then. But if you can unpack it into something that is propositional that I still find objectionable, then we can have a debate. We're still at I tried to get this through the head of this uh, Malzoan that agreed to debate me just a few days ago. Uh, he started giving me debate propositions, and uh, once I started to unpack them, it wasn't clear that I even disagreed with them. So I was like, we can't debate about something if I, we don't disagree about it. And, uh, and then he ended up fleeing from debate. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something about Malzoans and fleeing from debate. That's a common behavior point of like it's not even clear a debate needs to happen because i don't know what the hell we're talking about well okay well you think that eating meat right will come at the expense <coughs> of long-term long of, of longevity that that's, that seems to be what you believe so, and i believe that it doesn't so how do we put this in well my my, my views ah, aren't in question me. right now I, I i'm just i'm just saying i mean like let's but let's think about this together instead of you just asking me what what the claim should be because you understand what, what I, you understand what I believe. But it's I believe it's your me. proposition. It's yours. It's yours to defend. I'm just I'm just looking to get clarity on it because I don't understand it. I don't understand what a natural human diet is. When somebody says a natural human diet, I don't get a concept in my head of precisely what that means, and I certainly don't get a concept of precisely what somebody else means when they say that. So, when you say a natural human diet, you need to unpack that in terms that I can find intelligible because right now it's not intelligible to me i don't know what the hell that means neither do i i mean we were getting towards something intelligible before with the whole 50 percent meat thing but uh yeah what if we did it more like this like what if we said to mm, beneath the threshold of maybe 80% of food coming from meat, the more meat we eat, the longer we'll live. Is that clear? Um, so, uh, is it like any diet consisting uh, of greater than 80% uh, meat? Uh, any diet consisting of greater than 80% meat no, I think I, I, th I think I was more going for. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say earlier. I would also want to know 
what he means by percent. Like, percent in what exactly? Like, percent in calories? Percent in weight? Percent in... What exactly are we measuring here? Before the, the threshold of 80%, eating 80% of food coming from meat, more meat is better than less meat as far as ensuring longevity. So so, so basically what, what, what the, the way you would interpret that claim is by um, saying eating 75% meat is better than eating 65% meat given that the remaining 35 and 45%, or rather 25 and 35% are the same food. Yeah, I'm not appreciating the how that's different than what I had typed, right? Like any diet consisting of greater than 80% meats is going is going to ensure maximum longevity, or would you say that there's like log linear increases in longevity after 80%? Or like, no. like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clear on what you're getting at here. Hi guys. Sorry, I skipped the ad. I'm saying more meat is better before, like, after 80%. I'm saying, I, I like, I'm not going to say that a carnivore diet is best for ensuring longevity. I, I'm simply saying that we should be eating most, like, the more meat before 80% of food coming from meat, the better. So, like, 80% is going to be better than 50%. 80% is better than 75%. It's... And I'm, I'm not saying it's linear. Oh, it's wait. Actually... Are you are you saying that ninety percent will not necessarily be better than eighty percent? Like eighty yes. percent is some kind yes. of. Oh, okay. So any, yeah, uh, any diet consisting of greater than uh, greater than eighty percent. Okay, so like um, um, so then the proposition would be like um something along the lines of any diet consisting of less than eighty percent meat. Um, will not be best uh, for ensuring yes. maximum longevity like yeah. is that kind of what you're getting at okay yeah. so like all all permutations of diets that are above 80 percent meat do not produce differential longevity effects but all, but any but the lower you go in in meat like the the less longevity you have yeah, I, I'd be fine debating that, but I, but I don't want to get into that. I don't think you have any on this, but... That's going to re- put you face first into the reductio that was brought up earlier, where you can have a diet that's almost entirely meat, and then you include something like hemlock in the diet in a small amount, and then, yeah, longevity outcomes will most likely be extremely terrible. Getting into the intricacies of the percentages, <laughs> like... I think, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. yeah, I literally don't care about that stuff. Um, okay. So yeah, it's not somewhere I was planning to go. Planning to go, but uh, yeah, now I'm back to my original question um, about uh, the word best. I, I still don't know what the word best means. Right, we're rebuilding the the proposition. Like, what does the word best mean? Um, I think there's, there's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Go on. No, go on. Well, there, there's there, there's nothing that would reach the goal of longevity better. Than, uh, th- th- than that, like it's, well, well, actually, let me think about that. So best in this context, um, yeah, best, well, best, is, I'm not sure what was really confusing. Oh, cause like best could be interpreted in a bunch of modal ways. And I want to know which modal um, use of the term best, <clears throat> if it's even a, a modal use of the term best, it could be unpacked in a lot of ways. It can be unpacked in like, um, kind of like a modal way where you're saying you're, where you're making some kind of possibility claim. It could be unpacked in like a referential way where, it, where it's like, oh, it just means that this is better than that. Like y- you can unpack it all sorts of different ways. I'm just looking to kind of grasp it and figure out like which, which way you mean. So right now the proposition is nothing reaches the goal of, uh, maximum longevity better than a diet consisting of, um, uh, oh wait, no, that won't work. Uh, uh, so nothing reaches the goal of longevity better than any diet uh, consisting of uh, greater greater than 80% meat. That would be like the proposition. Nothing reaches the goal of longevity better than any diet consisting of greater than 80% meat. I think that's actually pretty close to what you said. 
Yeah, it was uh, probably more like 80% meat or greater, but yeah. Well, I think it was better. I think it was more so anything less than 80% meat will not be best in living and achieving optimal longevity. Oh, okay. So, uh... Oh, I see, I see. So, maybe I need to reword this. Okay, so... Also, where is he getting these numbers? I mean, presumably we're going to get into that once the proposition is fully pinned down. But, like, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see the evidence for that claim. Anything, any, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat will not uh, be best for ensuring uh, maximum longevity with best meaning, sorry, what did you say again? Nothing, well, as, as, like in terms of defining best or just mm-hmm. the, the claim? Just, just best, like what do you mean by best there? Mm. Any diet? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can you read the claim? Oh, yeah, it was like uh, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat um, would be or would not be best for ensuring maximum longevity. Um, like like as in, as in it won't do the job better than a, than a diet consisting of 80% meat. Any diet consisting of less than 80% meat um, will be... But, 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 but the problem is, like, what, what has to be considered is that I'm not saying a diet of 80% meat and then 20% poisonous plants is going to be better than 75% meat and 25% fruit. I, I will both... Well, <laughs> that would be a logical entailment, so you'd have to better define what you mean by a natural diet or what you mean by, you know, 80% meat and uh, 80% meat, right? What needs to be considered in the, in the proposition, I think, is that the remaining parts that is that the, the, the remaining portions are the same so given that the, the the remainder is the same i have no idea what that means what is he talking about so like whatever constitutes that last 20 percent needs to be held equal yeah it, it, it needs to be held equal to like if you were to eat less meat the what what, what would um uh, what would consist of the remaining percentage is going to be the same thing and what, what would, okay, what would that thing be in order for in order for this relation to hold with the maximum yeah, longevity? Yeah. Would it have to be like fruits and vegetables? No, no, it, it'll be so. So here's my point. Let me try to be clear. So yes, please let me try to be clear. I would appreciate that. <clears throat> it looks like this guy is really struggling to unpack his proposition. I mean, presumably you know your own proposition for this relation to hold with the maximum yeah, longevity yeah. would it have to be like fruits and vegetables no, no, it, it'll be so, so here's my point let me try to be clear so please like no. so eating 80 percent meat and then 20 percent of one other thing it could be anything it can be fruit is going to be better than eating 50 percent meat and 50 percent fruit but what i'm saying is you can't go ahead and say that my claim eating 80 percent meat and 20 percent of, of some other thing like fruit it's going to be better than eating 50% meat and 50% of some other, like, toxic thing. Like, I'm saying that we need to equalize the, the, the uh, remaining food. Like, they have to be the same thing for, for my claim, too. The same, um, the same thing as what? I still have no idea what he's talking about. Like, in my claim. Um, yeah, I mean, like, some of that seems like, um, so I asked you, I asked you earlier, like, in any diet above 80% meat will just be, like, non-inferior, like, they're all kind of, like, non-inferior, regardless of right, the proportion right, of meat, right. but, but the, what you're saying is, like, something has to occupy that space, and it can't be, like, poisonous plants or whatever? I'm saying whatever occupies that space has to be the same thing when you're basically, uh, looking at other proportions of meat oh like, so like all, like all things equal like more meat like um all uh, like yes. all, all things equal. Yeah, okay i got it um yeah, yeah. um all else equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will be like all things equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will be uh will, 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 will not will, will not be as good as a diet consisting of 80 percent meat uh will not be as good 
or um, will not, I think I'm going to be charitable here, will not ensure maximum longevity. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ensure maximum longevity. Uh, all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat will not ensure maximum longevity uh, to a greater degree uh, than a diet of greater than 80% meat. Right, like that's that's the proposition. All else equal, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat will not ensure maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 80% meat. Okay. Yeah, I still think it would probably be 80% meat or greater, but yeah. Well, well, well can, can we even make this even clearer, like more obvious for people? Can we say a diet consisting of, because, because I, I assume you would believe that eating, we can even say like 20% and then like 80%, like a diet consisting of less than 20% meat will not be, because I, I, th- I think that makes um, that makes it a much more like palatable thing for an audience. Like it, it's, it's more understandable. Less than twenty percent will not be as good as greater than eighty percent. There's there's a clear difference in our opinions, well, and, it's, and there's less slight nuance. Th- this is getting pretty close to something that's clear to me. I just uh, there there's it just depends on what he means, right? Like what it depends on what he's trying to say. That's why we're getting him to unpack this, right? So. You know, presumably you would need to choose which of the that bifurcation, which option represents the proposition that you're uh, attempting to posit. Just one last thing that I need clarification on, because I actually I, I don't mind the eighty percent threshold. Like anything lower than that will, you know, I I, I get I get this concept. Um, and you know whether or not the audience gets it to a greater degree, I don't, I don't really care. Like me and you are the people talking. I'm sad. I'm satisfied with this for the most part. There's one. There's one. One last word that I'm not quite sure exactly how you're using. So the the word ensure I take to mean like um, um, like grant some kind of certainty, right? Um, so when something is insured. I, I take that to mean that like something is like certain or something. How about, how about cause? Well, uh, all, well, let's see how that would sound. I mean, like all else equal, a diet consisting of less than eighty percent meats will not cause maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet. Or yield. Yield. yield? Uh, yeah, yeah, yield. Uh, yeah, so it's like produce. Um, yeah. So. Right. Produce is fine. Yeah. Right, so this is this 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 is intelligible to me. I think um, all else equal. Yeah, same. Although I, again, I would I would want the percent to be clarified. You know, whether we're talking about percent in weight or percent in volume, per- percent in calories. I mean, how exactly are we measuring these percentages? Any diet consisting of less than eighty percent meat will not yield. Uh, maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 50% meat. Yeah, that's intelligible to me. You mean 80? Uh, greater than 80% meat. Did I say something else? Yeah, you said 50. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was, that was uh, my mistake. But, um, but, but do you, what, like, would you defend the proposition if the initial number was 20? Like, is that still a proposition you would want to defend? Well, I'm not defending this proposition. I, I would be, I would be con- right, right. calling them into question. <laughs> I know that's what I was like. You're the one defending this proposition, dude. Like supposedly you're positing it. <laughs> right, right, right. Would you would you call into question the proposition if the initial number was thirty or twenty? No, no, I don't think it would change my approach at all. I don't care okay, about so the I don't, yeah. I don't care about the numbers. Do, do, do you think you would change the the first number to twenty then? Okay, so all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 20% meat will not yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet uh, of greater than 80% meat. Is that, like, is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah. yeah okay, that's okay I mean, that's still intelligible to me. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems like quite a different claim, but sure, whatever. If that's the claim he's trying to posit, then at least we have it that it's clear now. So... There's one thing here that I can see very clearly that is, like, all of, all of this is fine now. Um, there's one point here that is very obvious to me uh, as a point of attack, and that is just, what do you mean by not, right? 
Because when you say that it will not yield maximum longevity, like, what does that mean? Like, is that some kind of possibility claim? I've always wanted one of... Sorry, skip the um, Well, um, Well, not. It's just, if you put all other factors to the side, then the person on more meat will do better than the person on less than 20%. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so you, are you saying that like it's? Are you saying that like it's impossible for somebody on a on a diet of less than twenty percent meat having better longevity, or um, or or yeah, having better longevity than somebody on a diet of eighty percent meat? Are you saying that's an impossibility? All else equal, assuming you know, all all, all else equal, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So like all, like all everything else, yeah. Okay, so not... Here we go. <laughs> Making an impossibility claim. I've noticed that uh, the majority of the time when somebody's making an impossibility claim, they actually have no idea what they're trying to say. Uh, <laughs> most people have no idea what makes it impossible and in what modality they are referring to. <laughs> um, so not is taken to be like some kind of modal claim with regards to possibility, right? It's like, so... so here now the like the proposition has some like um it has some stuff baked into it about an impossibility there's an impossibility claim in here so by what modality are you making the impossibility claim is it a logical impossibility or is it a physical impossibility what kind of what kind of impossibility is this well maybe this maybe i can make it clear with this Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only way I would say it's the only way I would make this say it's impossible is if you have two identical twins, everything else, everything else the same, except one eats less than twenty percent and one eats over eighty percent. The one over eighty percent will live longer. That I'm, I'm not saying impossible in every single you know all these other contexts where you're not controlling for different lifestyle confounders. I'm saying only in uh situation like like the one i described okay so uh, yeah you have to replace the word not with like an entire paragraph in that case <laughs> um yeah so you're not saying that like all else equal simplicity or any diet consisting of less than 20 percent meat um or like all things equal it is impossible for any diet consisting of less than 20 percent meat to produce longevity gains over a diet um where over 80 percent um, is meat. All, all, all else equal, yeah, that's fine. So, oh, wait, 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 so, so you're, you are saying that that's impossible, or you're not? Yeah, yeah, it's impossible if, if everything else is equal. Right, okay, so, like, again, my, uh, the same the question's modality. on the table, like, are you saying that's a logical impossibility or a physical impossibility? Or uh, maybe uh, a non-logical impossibility, I mean, there's various modalities, it's gonna have to be pinned down. Oh, like a logical impossibility would be like if um, if it broke a law of logic, right? So like there are three laws of logic, and if it if it uh, if it violated one of them, that would be like a logical impossibility. Um, okay. And if it was a physical impossibility, it would mean that like there's some like physical constant or physical law that would be violated if this happened. If there was an instantiation of a diet of less than twenty percent meat, all else equal, that produced better longevity over a diet of eighty percent meat, like. One of those two things. On if the if the if the um, if the impossibility claim is going to go through, like one of those two things has to be demonstrated. Okay. Um. So there's a logical contradiction has to be demonstrated, or some kind of physical law has to be broken. Mm -hmm. Or or whatever modality that you're referring to, what law is being broken? In order more, it's probably logical. All right. So like, what's the contradiction that would be entailed? Um, well, it, it, it would be... They never spell out a contradiction. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, for example, me being associated with longevity, or like... I mean, I, I don't really know how... I don't really know why this needs to be embedded into the proposition. Well, it's your proposition. I mean, we can remove the impossibility claim if you want. If you want to retract it, that's perfectly fine with me. Well, if I if I retract the impossibility clean, then there is no proposition. Well, what? for the time That's... being, we could replace it with something else, like a probability claim. Right, right. So, so, uh, so not likely to yield. <laughs> so, all else equal, 
any diet consisting of less than 20% meat will n will not be uh, will not be likely to yield maximum longevity over uh, to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 80% meat. So that's, uh, that, that's I like it. that, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So um now that we got that out of the way. Cool. This this seems perfectly reasonable and intelligible to me. I mean, it doesn't seem reasonable to me, but yeah, like, I, I don't know say. why I would accept it, but it <laughs> seems intelligible to me. Yeah, so I guess, like, uh, my first oh, question yeah. is, uh, is this, uh, so this, this is, um, so this is a, this is a proposition that's actually, like, um, it's an empirically testable proposition, which puts it directly into the domain of being a scientific hypothesis. Would you sign off on this being a scientific hypothesis? Check it out, there's some guy, hey you! Skipped the ad. Yeah, <laughs> right, it's fine. Yeah, I would agree that this, this takes the form of a scientific hypothesis, because it's an empirically testable proposition that um, is used to explain things and, like, systematize and, like, unify knowledge and observations about phenomena and stuff like that. That's what I take it to kind of mean. Um, right, so my first question here is, like, um, yeah, what's the evidence for that? Oh wait, are you are you already recording on your end? Oh yeah. Okay, I haven't been recording a while. Let me just start. Um, let me just say. Do you mind just like let's just, like repeat the claim and then start? Sure. All right. Recording in progress. All right. So do you mind just uh, repeating the claim? Yeah, so the proposition that was clarified was all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 20% meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than any, or than a diet of greater than 80% meat. Um, and I asked if this was a scientific hypothesis because it takes the form of an empirically testable proposition that is used to explain things and systematize and unify uh, knowledge uh, about phenomena. And you you agreed that this is a scientific hypothesis. So given that it's a scientific hypothesis, I then asked, what's the evidence? Mm. Yeah, well, meat, uh, there's a recent 2020 study showing meat is associated with longevity. Right, okay, so, but, but I mean, like, meat's associated with longevity. I mean, like, that's that's not really going to get you to the proposition. I mean, like, did they actually have like a, a comparison between under 20% meat to over 80% meat? No, but meat was, I mean, I, th I thought I thought you didn't want to get into the... It, the well, then where did you get the numbers, dude? Are you just pulling them out of your rear end? I mean, come on. Well, intricacies of the numbers. I mean, if, if, if meat is associated with longevity and there's actual really quality evidence that meat eaters are more prone to the unhealthy user bias, then why wouldn't you expect that eating more meat yields longevity? Right, so are you referring to that cross-sectional study that had like a hundred and something countries in it? Yeah. Yeah, so like that's just like an ecological association. So like I have an alternative hypothesis. Um, meat is a correlate for affluence and people have more aff more longevity in affluent countries. So. What's the argument that you that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis? Mm, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. I just, I mean, I, I look at the the unhealthy user bias, and, and, that, and as I said, there's complete proof that meat eating is associated with doing other lifestyle factors that are uh, proven to be detrimental to longevity. And therefore, I think if we're seeing that meat is associated with longevity, despite those uh, negatives associated negatives that meat eaters are more likely to partake in, then it seems pretty clear to me that eating meat is a good way to ensure longevity. Yeah, but I'm not sure how that makes your I'm I'm not sure how that makes this evidence more expected on your hypothesis than mine because right. affluence is going to probably supersede all, most of those other um, health considerations in terms of its explanatory power with regards to longevity. So you might even just expect this on my hypothesis more. So like, what's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than mine? What's the argument that, where's the, the evidence that affluence is more, uh, is playing a larger role in, in longevity than the various like unhealthy user biases that eating meat is basically, uh, you know, 
that, 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 that goes with eating meat. It's not my burden. It's your burden. You're the one making the claim. You need to demonstrate that it's more expected on your hypothesis than some alternative hypothesis. Hello, oh. It's not my burden. Okay, well, I mean, I, I can go with this in other ways if, if, if you don't like the correlation. It's just you, I mean, I, I've heard you many times talk about uh, correlations and when we talked previously, you said, well, how do you establish that uh, smoking cigarettes is not, um, you know, is not just uh, like you, whatever, do, whatever you said about that and be to, to, as, as an attempt to glorify epidemiology or, or, or um, substantiate the findings. And now I'm giving you an example of epidemiology and it seems like there's kind of an inconsistency in your appreciation of epidemiology based on your based on what your agenda is. No, no, I would disagree. Um, but can we actually, like, can I get a concession then that this isn't, it's not clear that this is actually evidence in favor of your hypothesis? I think it's, I think it's evidence that could work with other pieces. It, it alone can't justify the hypothesis, but it can work with other, uh, you know, pieces of evidence just by the hypothesis. Right, so like, like, what do you take evidence to mean? Can you give me a quick definition of like what evidence means to you? Yeah, evidence is something that, that substantiates a claim, but I don't, I don't think evidence, I don't think one piece of evidence, I think evidence can work with other pieces of evidence to substantiate the claim. One piece of evidence in itself doesn't need to fully substantiate a claim. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take the view that evidence needs to fully substantiate a claim. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I take a different view about what evidence is. I, I, I take evidence to be something that which is expected on a given hypothesis, or more expected on a given hypothesis yeah, compared to some other hypothesis. hypothesis. If it's not more expected on that hypothesis compared to some other hypothesis, then it's just not evidence. Like it's something else. Like it's just, it, <laughs> it's not evidence, right? So. If you're gonna say like, oh, there's this study that showed like this correlation between like meat eating and and whatever, it's like, okay, that's one hypothesis, right? This is your this is your hypothesis that's actually in contention right here. But if I was to just give a, an alternative hypothesis and say like, hey, since it's cross sectional study, there's 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 no prospective um, follow up. There's no like there's there, there's no temporal component. There's nothing like that. You're just looking at a raw association between different variables. It's not clear to me that you're not just looking at a correlate for affluence because you can actually see the exact same correlations with smoking and longevity across all of those same countries too. And I can actually send you that data. So it's not clear to me that you're not just looking at an affluence effect. If anything, you might actually expect that on my hypothesis more than your hypothesis, right? So what's the argument that it's expected on your hypothesis more than it's expected on my hypothesis? Wait, are, are you saying that um, smoking is correlated with longevity? Yep, precisely. Really? <laughs> because it's a correlate um, because it's a correlate for affluence people who people who can afford to smoke live longer on average in those countries um people or countries that i should phrase that differently countries where the population is affluent enough to afford cigarettes are more likely to have a higher average life expectancy just as in countries where people are are um wealthy enough to afford eating higher amounts of meat they also have higher longevity because meat is like expensive relative to other foods so it's it's not clear to me that it isn't just a correlate for affluence just like smoking is a correlate for affluence they both in like a correlate they both correlate with longevity so again like what's the argument that your evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis watch i just like concede that smoking contributes to longevity <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I think I think it's reasonable if if um, if smoking is correlated with longevity, then then there's no reason why this evidence would stand. So it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I okay. can get a concession that this isn't evidence. Nice. Sure. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. That, that's fine. Cool. Um, but, so but I, uh, to back to the result. proposition. Back to the proposition. Yeah. What's the evidence for it? Right. Do you even have it? Um, that eating a natural diet is what's best. Like even well, eating what humans are, have been basically eating for millions of years is is what's best for longevity. Um, well, that's not evidence. That's just an assertion. Like, what is the evidence? Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the evidence would be by simply uh, looking in, in nature. I know you don't like this argument, but I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple points. So 
animals tend to live about seven times as long as the age at which they're fully grown. Um, this is a trend that we commonly see. And if that was to be applied to humans, um, we would be living well into our 130s or 140s. And it also seems as if um, uh, it seems like when animals are not given their natural diet, when they're given a novel diet, they tend to be sicker. And for you to assert that humans eating a novel diet would somehow benefit, you would have to be implying that we're some sort of anomaly uh, with regards to how the whole animal kingdom operates. And I don't think that's a claim that can be can be made or at least justified. So I just want to get clear on what exactly the evidence is here. Can you just like succinctly just give me like the evidence for the claim? Mm. That's what I love about listening to people who are uh, more skilled at debate is they don't get distracted by all these red herrings, right? Like people use rambling language to kind of like muddy the waters and, and take away from what is happening, right? So he offered a proposition and now Nick is asking for evidence for that proposition, right? So the ramble was not evidence. And so Nick just, again, goes right back to it. Like, where is the evidence for your proposition? I love that. It's very nice. Just, but, I mean, I, I just gave that an explanation. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for, like, a like just, like, something a little bit more abridged that I can just, like, kind of, like, handle and actually, like, look at. Um, so the evidence, the evidence for the proposition is that um, there, I think you said something like there is a tendency, um, for natural diets to fill in the blank, sorry? There's a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity relative to more novel diets in, in the animal kingdom and in, and in humans, but um, I was more talking about the animal kingdom. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, <laughs> the, the animal kingdom... Nope, we got another ad, y'all. <laughs> Apologize for that. Um, I'm working on getting a new computer, and if I can successfully do that, then we uh, we should be able to do this without these issues. So hopefully that'll that'll be uh, in the works soon and uh, all taken care of. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's that's. That's it's it's actually it's not going to be clear if that evidence is more expected, or on on your hypothesis relative to some other. Um, yeah, I mean, like, if you if you have like a natural diet um, <clears throat> that it, that an organism evolved on, um, you'll probably see some advantages over um, novel diets within certain time frames. So that's certain. That's 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 not something I wouldn't contest. That's not something I would contest, but. To say like um, so, it, like I'm still not clear on like what exactly the evidence is here. So there is a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity uh, uh, oh, uh, relative to novel diets. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, so and, and, and would you just use antagonistic pleiotropy as as a way to just get that out of the way? Well, see, the thing is that, like, there are many, there, there's an infinite number of permutations of novel diets, and just because a handful of them um, didn't produce longevity benefits over natural diets with some groups of animals, it, it's not clear if that's more or less expected on the hypothesis, actually, because it could just be that the particular novel diets that were selected were just not particularly good. It doesn't preclude well, the you... fact that there could be novel diets that are better than natural diets. That's a good well, point. What, what would a good novel diet, like... In, 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 for, in your opinion, what would a good novel diet be that supersedes the efficacy of uh, at least eighty percent meat diet? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, I, I I'd like to know the because if you said that if you say that this diet that a, a, a good novel diet exists, then there has to be then I'd like to know the constituents. Right, like I, 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 the thing is that it's it's not my burden to substantiate. So like. Uh, there is a ten yeah people people tend to tend to do this a lot in debates where they'll sit there trying to flesh out their position and the evidence behind it and in doing so will either 
catch something that is true of your position or they will assume something that is true of your position and ask you to defend it in lieu of defending their own claims. And so you got to watch out for that because it's easy to get distracted if you're not um, a little more experienced at debate. When someone's asking you a question, your natural instinct is going to be to just answer. But again, that's why you got to take into context the entire debate and what's going on. And Nick does an excellent job of that, as we can see here. See, because he brings it right back to the, you know, uh, instead of zooming in and being stuck at that one place where he's asking you to defend this claim, he zooms out and realizes where he, or probably never even never even was zoomed in right so he's got this zoomed out view of the debate and so he again just presses him on what's actually happening you have made the claim you need to present evidence for it the evidence you've presented doesn't seem to be more expected on your hypothesis than an alternative hypothesis and so he's um, trying to find uh, where the evidence that supports the claim is <laughs> for natural diets to yield longevity relative to novel diets um like the thing is that there's just an infinite number of permutations of novel diets just because a few of them like aren't or even just one or two of them haven't worked out for some animals i don't see how that's actually more or less expected on your hypothesis uh, what, what i'm simply saying is that the best novel diet um will never be better than the, the natural diet and, and, and it, like, uh, what, just, just, just for the sake of clarity, I, I would like to know what novel foods you think are better than um, ancestral foods and, wh and why that would be the case. I don't know why you're asking me any questions about my beliefs. They're not on. They're not in contention right here. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm... See, see, Nick does an excellent job of not getting distracted. He gets pushed again. What is your belief? Will you defend this? But that's not like his beliefs aren't the ones on the table right now. It's it's the proposition. Debating the proposition in question. So the proposition well, in question is all else equal, any diet consisting of less than twenty percent meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet uh, greater than eighty percent meat. And your evidence for that is there is a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity uh, relative to novel diets. <laughs> I don't, see, I don't see how that would be more expected on that hypothesis. Well, I guess I guess um, that there's never been a diet in, in, with any animal in which giving them a novel, a novel food is allowing them to live longer than when they're eating a natural food. I've never seen that. I mean, if you have, then um, I guess I get, and then, then my claim is totally defeated. But, but I, never, I don't think that exists. In fact, that there's no way that exists. So. Um, well, that seems like another impossibility claim, and you don't want to go down that rabbit hole. You re like, I think you realize what happened the last time you tried that. I don't think you want to do that again. Um, Hello, Al. Here's the thing. When you're looking at wild animals, it's not clear whether or not you're just seeing some survivorship bias effect. At the very least, it's not clear whether or not you're just seeing some survivorship bias effect, right? Because most wild animals die when they're young before they can even reproduce. This is true of humans, too. Like, over 50% of humans, like, die, or, like, around 50% of, of, of humans, like, like, die every generation in the wild, right? So, infant and child mortality rates are up around 50% in, like, traditional, ancestral, um, historical populations and whatnot. And this is actually just a very recent phenomenon that we were able to drive that down through things like vaccination and whatnot. Now we have, like, under 1%, um, or even under, like, a fraction of 1% uh, infant and child mortality in, like, Western developed countries. So, um, the thing is that when, when you have 50% of your population dying every generation, it's not clear that, you know, like, what you're seeing is, isn't just actually a, a survivorship bias effect of the fact that the stronger half of the population is surviving in every generation. So if you have animals in captivity, presumably they also have access to, like, medical care and stuff when they're reproducing and stuff, and you have um, members of that population being introduced that aren't really, they, they're not, they're not going to, like, the survivorship bias effect just isn't going to apply to them. So maybe they just get more sickly because they are the individuals who would have otherwise died in the natural context. So it's difficult for you to actually disambiguate the survivorship bias effect from the diet effect. And I'm not sure where the diet effect is coming from, if the survivorship bias effect is an alternative hypothesis that also makes the same prediction, right? So I, my, my, my hypothesis is that there, there's a survivorship bias effect going on, and it's not clear what the effect of diet is. So That's an excellent point, and it was very well explained. Like, uh, yeah, very impressed with Nick's performance in this debate so far. What, uh, so again, like, what's, what's the evidence that you're, that, or what's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's way more logical. Like, I think it makes way more sense to err on the side of caution and eat the natural diet that animals seem to 
do best on when they do their natural diet. Like, it, like it, it just seems radical to me to, 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 to suggest that deviating from a natural diet in the hopes of achieving longevity is a, a smart way to go about it. Just just based on what we've seen in in the animal kingdom, even we've seen in humans, but. Uh, and so now he's just talking about his impressions. He's not he's not actually describing how or why this evidence would be more expected on his hypothesis than Nick's hypothesis or providing different evidence which would explain why or which would provide evidence that is more expected on his hypothesis than an alternative hypothesis. Yeah, that's just an appeal for incredulity. That's not an argument that you want to use to support this. <laughs> like it seems weird to me, so like that, that, yeah, that's literally a logical fallacy called an appeal from incredulity. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to find that particularly persuasive, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost prepared to pretend I didn't hear it. So, like, that's the argument. <laughs> I'm almost prepared to pretend I didn't hear it. I have a hypothesis that survivorship bias explains the effects. <laughs> What's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than mine? Yeah, I don't really have any quantitative evidence to, to say that the, the, the survivorship bias is more is uh, less at play. Then what I'm what I'm discussing, I just think it. Okay, great. That sounds like you're conceding well, that this also isn't evidence. I, I I'm not making a concession. I think I think. Well, well, here's the other thing. Well, I feel like these pieces of evidence can all work. It would be, and, and uh, we can work with one another to substantiate a claim. They're not even I'm evidence. Sure. I mean, like, yeah, that, that that's just trivially true. I don't I don't contest that. The thing is that I've been able to weave together alternative hypotheses that you can't defeat. That's the problem. So even if you weave them all together and have like this this. Like I can still just weave all mine together, and it's still just it's still just going to be the same defeater. Like you, you just need to provide arguments for these pieces of evidence. Um, so like, in in like individually, the evidence that you put on the table is not clear how it's more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis. If you aggregate them somehow, I mean, it, it, it's not clear what that's doing for you. I'm not entirely sure even what that means, but um, yeah. So can we agree well, that like if you can't figure out how to tell me what why this is more expected on your hypothesis than mine, that this wouldn't count as evidence? Well, I, I kind of want to know what the alternative is, like to 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 um, eating uh, meat. Like, like what what are you supposed to do instead if you want to achieve longevity? Based on your proposition, it sounds like something that you should have already worked out ahead of time. You should be asking <laughs> you that question. No, I, 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 I want to know what you think, though. Oh, well, it doesn't matter what I think. Because I, I just want to know. See, well, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow you to derail the conversation. It's your proposition on the table. I'm interrogating. I'm cross examining your proposition. Exactly. Right? Yeah. See, see, Nick has has an excellent kind of um understanding of where he is in the debate process and he doesn't let himself get led down these pathways i unfortunately it's it's a common mistake for people who aren't experienced debaters to get led down these pathways when presented with them because again like i was mentioning earlier your natural instinct when you get asked questions when you get pressed on your beliefs is to defend them, is to uh, answer the questions. But if, you know, those questions aren't relevant and, you know, those beliefs aren't relevant to what's happening in the debate at that time, then it's just a red herring and it's and it's a waste of time and it's it muddies the waters and it, it allows people to weasel out of defending their propositions, which people love to do because it takes the pressure off of them and then they don't feel... Like, they have to come up with an answer. They don't feel like they have to actually adequately defend their claims. They feel like they can they can just kind of weave the conversation into another direction, right? <laughs> so, like, you're giving me two pieces of evidence. Turned out they weren't evidence. So what's the evidence for the claim? Well, okay, well, how about we look at, um, how about we look at the, the Harvard study, the Harvard Congress study? Where everyone basically, everyone who went on it got incredibly good results. They are incredibly good papers. results. I saw those results. A lot of people don't know how to interpret that table. I think it's table four in the paper. They include outside the brackets the actual, like, um, the, the unpaired data, and they include in the brackets paired data. And it looks like mean and standard deviation the way it's normally represented in tables, but that's not actually the way it's represented. And if you look at the paired data, they actually did worse. They did worse? Yeah, they did, they did worse on a number of metrics, particularly coronary artery calcification. There's a non-significant increase in coronary artery calcification with paired data. That's, that means people who had either with or without CAC at baseline had an increase in CAC with their follow-up examination after the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, wow. it, it's not clear how that evidence is more expected on your hypothesis. <laughs> because Hello. You could win a Chevy oh, Volt. Sorry TV about the ads, y'all. delivery online. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, this is this is this debate has definitely been uh, a massacre so far, and uh, I have a feeling it's only going to get worse. Yeah, so like, it, it's not clear how that evidence is more expected on your hypothesis <laughs> because. Um, about this, every other food besides meat seems to confer detriment. Oh, that's just going to be trivially false, um, because they, like you, you have like basically the entire field in nutritional epidemiology showing evidence that's not expected on your hypothesis. Well, okay, so so how how do you know that it's not um, like affluence or it's not healthy user biases? Like, if you're going to dismiss epidemiology when I'm making my claim about meat being associated with longevity, how are you going to say that your epidemiology is more valid than, than what I cited? Uh, because it has higher internal validity. You're referring to cross-sectional studies. I'm referring to prospective cohort studies when I talk about epidemiology. Mm. Is that what you're talking about? You said prospective co cohort studies? Yeah. I have a funny feeling that he's not familiar with the hierarchy of evidence. <laughs> or if he is familiar with it, I have a hunch that he doesn't abide by it or, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't accept it. Compared to the cross-sectional studies, they have enormously higher internal validity. That's the signature breaker. I mean, I would reject cross-sectional studies even if they were in my favor. I don't think they're particularly good evidence. Mm -hmm. Right, so like we have an entire field where we're producing prospective cohort studies that are investigating populations consuming more meat as opposed to less meat, and they're producing results that aren't expected on your hypothesis. Right, so it just, I mean, what explains that? Well, wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, the health user bias still would be at play, as would the can you define just 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 humor me here because a lot of people use this term and don't actually understand what it means. Can you re can you recreate for me what the healthy user bias means? The the people who engage in one activity that might not be so healthy also do other things that have been proven to be healthy. So for example, eating plants. People who eat lots of vegetables are more likely to get more sunlight and um, like probably higher socioeconomic status. They're probably drinking better water, like the problem, I don't know, like, like there's a whole host of things. I can, tell you, I can tell you right now, that's not the healthy user bias. That's not so, what that so, means. The healthy, so, user so, bias is a, the healthy user bias is a type of selection bias whereby a certain demographic of people are more likely to participate in research as opposed to another demographic of people. That's what the healthy user bias is. What you are actually d describing right there is something called multicollinearity. Now, multicollinearity, oddly enough, there isn't really strong evidence for multicollinearity in the in the, the research papers that I'm talking about, because what happens when you include um, when you include variables that uh, co-vary in the same model, generally the confidence intervals blow up, and it's more likely non-significant, right? So when you see tight confidence intervals and statistical significance, that's evidence against multicollinearity, right? So when you are describing like all of these things correlating together, that's multicollinearity. When we look at the actual papers, we don't see we don't see evidence of multicollinearity. We see evidence of independence, which means that this interpretation of the healthy user bias that you're putting on the table it's not actually like correct there's like no evidence for it um so yeah i, I would just say that like that this is it's not substantiated by the evidence i i don't really understand your explanation of why of why if i described as multicollinearity i don't understand why multicollinearity wouldn't be applicable in studies yeah, that i just because in the adjustment model of those studies like so let's say we're in, well, let's say we're investigating red meat right and we have red meat and cardiovascular disease and in the model we pay we place things like uh age sex bmi um, fruits and vegetables, um, socioeconomic status, education, uh, marital status, yada, 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 yada. If any of those things were correlating together so tightly um, that it was ambiguous which one you were looking at, what, you, what would happen when you actually included that in the model is that the confidence intervals would blow up. They would go from being tight to being mm -hmm. barn doors. But that's not what we see in those papers. So clearly there's enough variation in the populations that we're, that we're investigating that we get relatively precise results. We don't get barn doors with the confidence intervals. We get tight results. There's, that's evidence of independence, not evidence of multicollinearity. So what you're describing literally is not verifiable in the actual studies that you're critiquing with this critique. Like your critique literally just doesn't apply. Mm. Oof. Yeah, I mean, like... So the problem is I'm, I'm not like I'm not familiar with a lot of your arguments and a lot of the evidence that you're citing, so it's hard for me to like discern between between truth and fallacies. I, I don't think oh, that would, like, it, it, like, let, let me let, let me clarify something for you. This isn't my opinion. This isn't something that you're gonna that is this is a mathematical consequence of doing the of doing a model with the variables behaving the way you're saying they behave, right? Like you can actually measure this mathematically with something called the variance inflation factor, right? We got another ad, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. <clears throat> mm. 
but at least the audio is fixed, right? So, I don't know. It's There's trade-offs. <laughs> right? Like, if you have multiple variables going into the same model that are basically proxying for one another, the variance inflation factor is going to go through the roof and the confidence intervals are going to blow up. It's just a mathematical consequence of having variables that are behaving the way you say they're behaving in the model, right? So, if your hypothesis is that those the, that these variables are are actually proxying for each other in the way that you're suggesting they do, the, the evidence, uh, like the tight confidence intervals and the statistical significance um, in the aggregate data, is literally not expected on that hypothesis. Um, and, and like mathematically, we wouldn't like I don't even know how you would get that mathematically, um, given what you've described. So, yeah, I mean, like it's just a false claim, at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like. Mm. The problem is, a lot, like, I really don't know a lot of what you're saying, like, the, 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 the ways that you're, or, like, the words that you're using to, um, like, produce metrics that would be able to figure out whether this, whether the evidence of studying is right or wrong. I'm not familiar with you saying so. Um, yeah, well, I mean, not... like, th these are the types of concepts that are going to be invoked when we're comparing scientific data. If you're going to invoke science, I mean, you told me this was a scientific hypothesis, right? If you're going to invoke science, these are the types of baseline things that you need to be familiar with in order to even talk about the subject, right? So just if you're admitting to me now that these are not concepts that you're familiar with, basically you're admitting to me that you're not familiar with science. And if you're not familiar with science, I would say that you'd be a little less confident in your claims regarding scientific evidence going into the future. Mm. And, and, and that is being extremely polite. <laughs> I, I, I embrace this logic. Um, what did you say? Sorry, you broke up for a second here. No, I think I, I, think I, I embrace logic. embrace logic. You embrace logic. I mean, like, what what does that have? I mean, <laughs> to, I mean, what is it? What is what is that a response to? I mean, it's just, I don't know. It, it just seems like you, you uh, like you, you're you're a fan of seed oils and everything, and and you. you... <laughs> Science is based on logic, right? Like the reason the hierarchy of evidence holds true is because it applies the laws of logic to the reasoning between. Uh, <clears throat> the importance and uh, what's more expected on one hypothesis than another hypothesis according to the available evidence. I mean, you, you, don't, you can talk about it in, like, in a fancy way with, with nice big words, but in the end it just seems like to be completely illogical. What's the, what, so I take illogical to mean like there's some kind of contradiction. Is there any contradiction in what I said? It just doesn't seem to, to, to make sense to me. Oh, well and, that just means... And, 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 and just from, from what I've seen and observed... Um. Right, so that, that doesn't mean that what I'm saying is illogical. It means, like, from your perspective, what I'm saying is unintelligible. Right, right? so if what I'm saying That's is unintelligible to you, I mean, from my perspective, I would just take that as evidence that you need to get more familiar with these terms. Like, if you go into Google right now and type in uh, multicollinearity or variance inflation factor, it will verify exactly what I've told you. Right, like what I told you about nutritional epidemiology and including variables in the adjustment model and what would happen if those variables behaved the way you're saying they behave, what we would see in the outcome data, what we would see in the effect measure afterward, all of that is verified by just typing multicollinearity, variance, inflation factor, adjustment into Google and just watching a couple videos on the subject. Easily verifiable. Mm -hmm. And you can reproduce it mathematically. I mean, <laughs> I could open up R right now and grab a data set and literally demonstrate this to you on like, like right now. I mean, like I'm, I'm not going to because I don't think that makes for very good content. But what I'm saying is not hocus pocus. This is just mathematics. Okay. How about this? I mean, we we've eaten significantly less meat, less animal products in the past hundred years, and our rates of heart disease, cancer, all kinds of diseases have gone up. So the, the I mean, okay, yeah, again, so, like, survivorship just, bias. I mean, like, is this is this evidence that you're, are you submitting this as evidence for the hypothesis? Yeah, I mean, it would be it would be basically a, a cohort of people, with like a, a population that has deviated from eating lots of meat and has paid a price, uh, you know, in terms of well, how, do you know, how do you know they paid for diseases? I, I don't mean to cut you off, but how, how do you know that they've paid a price in virtue of like eating less meat? Maybe they paid a price in terms of affluence. Maybe they paid a price in the fact that they can afford to eat whatever the hell they want, or they um, they paid a price in terms of. Um, having access to labor-saving devices. Maybe there's less physical activity. Like, there's all sorts of alternative hypotheses about what produces more disease. Personally, I think it's, like, an intersection of a, of a number of different factors that produces, like, the types of disease that we see um, in, the mo in modern time. And I think survivorship bias also is something that you can't disambiguate here. Because right. in the early 1900s is where we really saw the stepwise reductions in infant and child mortality. So prior to those times... Yeah, sure. It, it's natural that everybody would look like super robust and fit, right? Because like the weaker have the population the generation. But now in the modern area, in the modern era, 
we rescue all those people. And maybe those are just the sickly people that would have otherwise died, and now we've rescued them. They're allowed to survive through childhood, and maybe they just produce sickly adults, and then you see a rise in chronic disease. That's an alternative hypothesis, right? So it's not it's still not clear to me how that evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than even the negation of your hypothesis or some alternative hypothesis. Yeah, no, it just it just seems to me like you really pick and choose what epidemiology you like. And you, you no, know, I explained it. I, expl I explained why, like, <laughs> I mean, okay. I explained why um, I have more credence in certain epidemiology as opposed to other epidemiology. I have more credence in prospective cohort studies than I do for cross-sectional studies because they have the necessary components to inform a causal inference, whereas a cross-sectional study doesn't, right? A cross-sectional study has no, te has no temporal component. You can't, it actually can't disambiguate cause and effect or, or um, antecedent events versus consequent events. You can't disambiguate those things with cross-sectional studies. You can with cohort studies which is why I give them more credence. I don't cite cross-sectional studies. So when you tell me that I'm being inconsistent with regards to epidemiology, you're either just confused or making some kind of category mistake because I'm literally not talking about that type of epidemiology when I make claims about epidemiology uh, or when I use epidemiology to support a claim. I'm just literally not talking about that type of epidemiology. Mm -hmm. How about, um, I mean, how about the, the, the blue zones where they're eating lots and lots of meat and even like the Hunza eat like 50% of their food from dairy and uh, like just, just it seems like the, the, the blue zones do eat a lot of meat, and they live obviously a very long time. Are, are, are they more contaminated? It seems like he's just kind of like throwing whatever ish he has at the wall and just hoping that something sticks. Like, <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing. He came so ill prepared. There isn't in, in those groups as well. Well, it just it, it also just seems like a cross sectional thing. Like it, it's not clear how that ev is actually evidence for the hypothesis because there's a number of other factors that could explain that. I mean, the blue zones also tend to be more um, of a religious orientation, and maybe religious orientations have you know some longevity benefit. Maybe um, I mean they may eat a lot of meat, but they also eat a lot of plants. So maybe it's the plants that are conferring longevity benefit. It's not clear that the evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than than the alternative hypothesis that I'm putting on the table, right? Like, your, your burden is to provide some evidence that is actually more expected on your hypothesis than some other alternative hypothesis, or even just straight up the negation of your hypothesis, right? So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the problem with this is that we're going piece by piece, and it's much, and to me, the, the, the claim is, is much more logical when you look at it, like, holistically, like, okay, in the world, eating more meat is associated with longevity. Okay, blue zones, they, they eat meat, they live longer, meat is the most nutrient-dense thing, right? People do... He's just trying to do the constellation thing better. again, where he's like, "Well, what if I, what if I weave these all together again?" It, it it doesn't nullify the critiques that were brought forward, right? The critiques still stand, whether you're constellating all these um, supposed pieces of evidence or not. And keto and ketosis, well, low carb diets, well, to the high carbs, like. You put these pieces together and in themselves they might not work to substantiate the claim but when you put them all together that, that, that seems to make more sense which is why i don't feel like this is going to get anywhere um right but, but what, what, the way it's going what you're what you're okay so a, a hypothesis can you can make predictions but a hypothesis can also make retrodictions right so a hypothesis can make a prediction about what you what you're likely to see in the future what you're going to see in the future if you perform some test or or in you know make some observation or do some investigation but you can also make retro retrodictions right so those are just things that are um, subsumed by the theory itself, right? So what you're what you're telling me is all retrodictive, right? They're they're all just like look and look we have all of these phenomena and we can just package them up into this idea that all else equal, any diet consisting of less than twenty percent meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than eighty percent meat. And the thing is, that just seems like a just so story, right? It just seems like a fairy tale. It seems like a, it's, it it just seems like you're storytelling because I don't know, I don't know exactly why. I should think that this hypothesis is even theoretically virtuous, right? So, like, when I'm talking about predictions, I'm talking about the, the, the scope and fruitfulness of the hypothesis, right? So, this, this, you certainly have some degree of scope because you're trying to pull together a bunch of phenomena, but, like, what novel predictions does this hypothesis make? Right? Oh, well, Hi hypotheses generate predictions. That, like, that, that's one of their fundamental goals is to generate predictions. So, like, what novel predictions has this hypothesis made that you can point to and be like, listen, given this hypothesis, we, 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 we performed an investigation and saw that, right? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, like a long time ago, we, we saw that, I think it was Saturn's orbit was kind of perturbed by something. Like we would, we would run some calculations, we'd look in the sky and uh, Saturn was not behaving right, right? And we got, went back to the drawing board and was like, oh, actually our math makes sense if we presuppose that there's another body out there with roughly this mass occupying this space, 
and then we point the telescope where it would have to be in order for the math to make sense, and boom, there's Neptune, right? That's a novel prediction that's made by hypothesis. I'm asking you, like, what novel predictions this hypothesis has made? Okay, well, about this, so I briefly going back to what I'm saying about nature and embracing a more natural um, way of being, so... I love how Nick takes the time to, like, thoroughly explain things and even gives, like, n- like concise clarifying examples i mean that's an excellent move in debates especially when you're dealing with more complex concepts that might be difficult for a layman to comprehend uh, being able to bring them down to a level that uh that is more easily expressed is a is a, a rare skill and it's 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 awesome that nick has that i really appreciate that <laughs> Nature would be, humans in a natural context, right, would be getting lots of sunlight, which has been shown to be beneficial, right, for longevity. They would be uh, grounding, which is shown to be beneficial as well. They'd be engaging in lifestyle factors that seem to extrapolate positive outcomes um, with, as measured by longevity. So why would it be that when all these things are producing more longevity, meat or, like, the diet is one thing that would get in the way of that, but, like, when all these factors are supporting it? I'm not necessarily claiming that that's the case. I don't know what you're talking about right now. I mean, like, it, it's, your, it's your proposition on the table. I'm open to persuasion, right? It's your job to persuade me of the proposition. Right, 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 right. So, so all these other things that humans do in a natural context, like getting tons of sunlight, mm-hmm. all, these things have, all, these, all these things have been shown to be beneficial for longevity, typically. And, and, and our, the, the diet is, one, is something that you're um, arguing will not, actually, no. be good for longevity. Well, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that it isn't. I'm con- I'm, I'm content- I'm, I, I can be completely agnostic about it. What I'm doing is challenging your proposition. Right? I, I'm, well, well, just because I'm challenging the proposition does not mean that I'm affirming that it's negation. That's certainly not what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? So I'm open to persuasion. People make this mistake all the time. You'll notice this if you get into debates with people, is they'll assume that if you challenge a proposition, that you're automatically uh, assuming the negation of that proposition is the case on your view. And to give you an example, right, like, let's say that someone came into my server and they were like, Yo, Paradigm, I think that God exists, right? I think this deity um, exists. And I challenge them on that. And they start to go, oh, well, you know, what's your evidence that a deity doesn't exist, right? It's like, I never said a deity doesn't exist. I just challenge that a deity does exist, right? Those are two different things. I take the agnostic position, you know, I don't know whether a deity either exists or doesn't exist, but I'm very skeptical of the claim that a deity does exist, and I'm very skeptical of the claim that a deity doesn't exist, right? Like, that, like neither one seems to be a, a claim that can be um, substantiated with the available evidence, and so I remain agnostic on the matter. <laughs> But yeah, um, you'll notice that for sure. People will, they do this all the time, where if you challenge them on a proposition, all of a sudden they're challenging you on the negation of their proposition when you never affirm that. It is the case that those, that those diets do offer like, ma- are, like, offer maximum longevity or whatever. The, the thing is that we're still stuck on this one question. What the hell is the evidence for that? Um, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that humans engage in, naturally in lifestyle factors that yield longevity. Right, all these things that have been shown, like sunlight, which I don't think even you would dispute. So why would it be, like, uh, I'm not even gonna ask the question, it would make sense that the diet is one other thing that doing naturally would allow us to live long. Um, yeah, maybe. Like, that just seems like, re- like, li- like, it looks like you're providing, like, an argument for the proposition, right? But the thing is that you granted to me earlier that it's a, it's, it's a scientific hypothesis. It's an empirically testable proposition that is used to unify and systematize um, knowledge and knowledgeable phenomena and whatnot. So it's not particularly interesting to me, like, the, the argument for it necessarily, because I can always just ask for the next premise. I'm not really particularly interested in doing that. Because it's a scientific hypothesis, I just need to ask, like, what the hell is the evidence for it? Right. Mm-hmm. That's That's been the question this whole time. What is the evidence for it, right? And... So far, every piece of um, information that's been brought forward as ostensible evidence has um, 
turned out to not be evidence. Um, the, other, the evidence could be, like, an inference, but then, like, what, it, it, it's almost like making the admission that you don't have any empirical evidence for it. Like, your evidence is some kind of inference structure. And, you know, that would be somewhere that I would be, I might be willing to go, but, I mean, you'd ha I think you'd also have to, at the same time, grant me that this, this is not an empirical, uh, like, you don't have any empirical evidence to support the proposition. Because, I mean, you, you've stated, like, I think, like, five pieces of evidence, and none of them have panned out, right? I could I could just dream up alternative hypotheses on the spot and ask you why the, why the evidence is more expected on yours rather than mine, and like it, it just it's a brick wall and a dead end every single time. So I mean like right, you, I just mentioned that. Are you willing to sign off that you don't have any empirical evidence for this proposition? If you want to go into like exploring some kind of inference structure. Well, I mean, I can put a few studies together that seem to corroborate the point that eating easier for longevity, for example. Um, well, like, like, if you put the pieces together f from a more broad point of view, like, I've, I could give you randomized controlled trials showing people in ketosis get better biomarkers, or people removing fiber from their diet get uh, better constipation, or like constipation relief, or people stopping oxalates or lectins get better results as well, or like people eating um, more meat uh, improves anemia, or like, like yeah, there, there's a bunch of things. Okay, I'm okay, the outcome in question is longevity, though, so none of those outcomes matter, unless you want to, again, uh, assert some other proposition that, that with regards to those outcomes. Yeah, it, it sounds like the, the way, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude and cut you off, but it sounds like you're making a category mistake because a lot of the endpoints and a lot of those studies don't even interact with the proposition. Right. The proposition, right. The proposition is about maximum longevity. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, about, well, it's not about biomarkers moving in one way or the other because mm -hmm. maybe biomarkers move in the opposite direction, you get a longevity benefit. That's sure. possible. Okay. Is, is it possible for, for a biomarker to worsen? Yeah, that, might, that may yield more longevity. Sure. Yeah. Of course it's possible. What's the, what's the contradiction? <laughs> well, well, I, I, well, like, when, when has that been seen before? A biomarker has it been seen with, before? Well, like, when, like how, how, how would that come into fruition? Like, what's, what's a biomarker that, that could get worse and yet longevity gets better? We see this tons of, tons of time. Like, we see this all over the place where biomarkers get better and then you have shorter longevity and biomarkers get worse and you have, and you have longer longevity. Like, people's biomarkers are going up and down all the time. Right, like people are people are dying with perfectly good biomarkers, right? People are people are living like weirdly long times with enormously wacky biomarkers. So I mean, it's it's again like I'm just saying that it's possible because I don't I can't think of a contradiction entailed from an instantiation of a biomarker going up and or a biomarker going out of whack and um, having some longevity benefit. Um, I mean, like I can give you I, I could give you an example actually. Um, so, exa for example, uh, in populations that have the um, C677, C677T mutation for MTHFR, they have all sorts of biomarkers that are going out of whack, right? Particularly homocysteine, yet they live longer. Don't know why. People with increased bilirubin live longer. That's a biomarker that's out of whack. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just like it happens all the time. The markers go out of range, and for whatever reason, you get a longevity benefit. Um, but, that's a th but this is tangential to my point, which was, Listen, like those studies aren't even things that are interacting with uh, with the proposition because the proposition is about maximum longevity. It's not about biomarkers. It's not about oxalates, you know, causing kidney stones or anything like that. It, it, it's literally about. <laughs> See, Nick, Nick barely started to get distracted there, but then immediately mentioned how it was irrelevant and got right back to the point. And that's that's a, you know, a sign of a skilled debater, which Nick is. <laughs> longevity, right? So I, I would just yeah. dismiss those studies as some kind of category mistake. Well, well, part of what I said is that other foods besides meat seem to be conferring a detriment, and those and these studies would give credence to that because if people are literally just doing if everything is controlled besides the removal of you know a certain type of food or a certain um, toxin, then it would, then you know you would reach a conclusion that that toxin is problematic, and, and there's all these toxin. It's a buzzword to call something toxic or toxin, right? Like in it, like. In, any substance is going to have an upper limit to what you can safely consume um, it, before it becomes toxic in your body, right? So calling something toxic, like, who cares? Like, what we care about is whether or not the, the um, substance in question is toxic in the levels that we would normally expect people to consume them across the board showing that plants uh, are causing problems for people well what do you mean i mean like again like if, if this is i mean like i'm going to treat this like a new claim uh because even that wouldn't interact with the proposition so j even just treating this like a new claim like the highest internal validity evidence that we have on the subject wouldn't be expected on that hypothesis right like 
like fruit and vegetables like pretty much universally correlate with uh, positive health outcomes the more of them you eat that's even true true of whole grains that's even true of legumes it's true of pretty much any whole plant food that you that is like widely disseminated into any population from which we have data like this we find the opposite of that like the results that we find are not expected on your hypothesis they're they're expected on the negation of the hypothesis right well like i mean uh, like i said i just don't think that um it doesn't seem like it still doesn't seem like you're being very consistent um, why okay wait wait wait. we need to resolve this we need to resolve this because if you're going to accuse me of like some kind of contradiction or inconsistency we really need to dissolve we, we really need to resolve this right so you are claiming that i'm inconsistent with my use of epidemiology correct yeah yeah what render that argument for me please well i mean you've you're you're continuously picking and choosing what epidemiology is valid based on how what, what based on whether or not it supports um no. the, the negate the, the, the whether based on whether or not it supports the negation of my hypothesis no, 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 he's not. <laughs> have I, I, I haven't referred to any cross-sectional data, right? I've only ever referred to prospective cohort studies, which I already told you I give higher credence to because they have higher internal validity than... Uh... We got another ad, y'all, sorry. Like, I could see the speed. There's always why to say... Um, cross-sectional studies. Cross-sectional studies don't even have a temporal component. You can't even ascertain antecedent and consequent events. You can't ascertain those relationships in cross-sectional studies, mm -hmm. so it's, like, I'm... Okay, well, well, how about this? I mean, there, there are... Well, wait, 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 we haven't resolved this. Yeah, before, I know, I know. Before, before we wait, move wait. on, can I get a concession that I'm not being inconsistent to my application reference to epidemiology? Well, well, if, if you, um, yeah, well, let me say one more thing before we, um, before we finalize this. So there, how about the prospective cohort study showing no, um, so we know relationship between increased saturated fat consumption and risk of heart disease. Like you, I, I don't imagine you would give credence to a study like that, despite it being a prospective cohort. Well, this is completely tangential to what we're talking about, but I will yeah, it's again, not, it's it, not. it is it is completely tangential because the outcome in question is longevity. Because because it's not good because if you wouldn't give credence to a prospective cohort study that's finding the results alternative to the ones that you want to see or or or, or the re results um alternative to the negation of my hypothesis, then you don't seem, then you wouldn't be consistent. But if you do give credence to it, then you are consistent. Listen, there's tons of prospective cohort studies that don't find an association between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. That's not revelatory to me. I accept that. The thing is that when the data is aggregated, they do. There's not the data is aggregated. <laughs> sure. And, and, but, but, you know, to a, to a, um, a more prudent point, you know, the, the outcome in question is not heart disease. The outcome in question is longevity, like I was just mentioning. So this is this is tangential. Yeah, when you when you pool all of the cohort studies together and actually like and actually subgroup analyze them or perform a meta regression or something like that, when you subgroup analyze them you always you pretty much always see the increase in risk precisely where we would presuppose it being, which is around ten percent of calories. You almost always see that. Um, so the problem with the co this is complete tangent, but I will entertain it, um, just, just so that this point doesn't escape. So at least, you know, at least he recognizes when he's on a tangent and then even admits it. Like, that's kind of cool. Because, like, this is, like, a really egregious claim that you're making. Okay, so <laughs> the, pro the prospective cohort stories, many of them don't see an association. That's fine. That's because the association's nonlinear. If, if you're, if you're looking at... Um, if, you're, if your investigation of low to high intake is happening on the floor of the curve, you're not going to see a statistically significant difference. They're both approximately going to be equal with regards to risk, so you're not going to see a, st a statistically significant difference between them. Likewise, if you're comparing low to high on the top of the risk curve, you're also not going to see a statistically significant difference between them, or at least you're less likely to, right? Because they're not going to be that different from one another with regards to the risk conferred. Now, because it's a nonlinear association, if you investigate cohorts on the uptick of that risk, where the lower intake is down here and the upper intake is up here, you almost invariably see the increase in risk. And that's precisely where the increase in risk is said to be, around 10% of calories. That's what the randomized controlled trials show. That's what the epidemiology shows, if you actually care to look, which most researchers don't. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's enormously consistent. I, I don't think we have a research question in nutrition that's as consistent as that one, right? And that's not me rejecting prospective cohort studies. That's me having respect for the evidence hierarchy. Because what I'm doing right there is I'm looking at a meta-analysis Right, all of these cohort studies together. How how can we perform some kinds of some kind of sensitivity analysis such that we can actually um, ascertain sources of heterogeneity? Like, I mean, like the heterogeneity is through the roof. But like, I'm going off on a bit of a ramble. But basically, when the data is aggregated, you do see the effect. And having individual cohort studies that don't see the effect is actually expected. Right. And what was I about to say? Actually, let me see here. 
randomized controlled trials show. That's what the epidemiology shows. It's oh yeah, show. right. And I'm I'm still you know I'm still pretty skeptical that um, that carnivore camaraderie is even familiar with or accepts the evidence hierarchy. That's still not clear to me. I, I kind of wish they would uh, they would go there. All of these cohort studies together. How how can we perform some kinds of some kind of sensitivity analysis such that we can actually um, ascertain sources of heterogeneity? Like I mean, like the heterogeneity is through the roof. But like I'm going off on a bit of a ramble. But basically, when the data is aggregated, you do see the effect. And having individual cohort studies that don't see the effect is actually expected. Okay. Well. Yeah, so, so, so that was a tangent that I that, that is now resolved because <laughs> like we can move on from this. So now I'm going to go back to what I was actually saying with regards to the claim that you made about my reference to epidemiology. So Excellent. when I'm referring to epidemiology, I'm referring to prospective cohort studies in particular. I'm not referring to cross-sectional studies. So when you are saying that my rejection of cross-sectional study is inconsistent when I'm citing uh, prospective cohort studies, just in virtue of the fact that they are both epidemiology, I would just say that's, that, that's a misrepresentation of my view and what I'm actually doing. What I'm actually doing is respecting the evidence hierarchy and actually respecting internal validity and the constituents required to have a sound causal inference, right? Like, we can go into causal inference if you want. Well, what, would that, what would that entail, going into causal inference? I would just explain a few things. I mean, like, <laughs> um... So like yeah, like, like let's just uh we can we can start off by by doing this. Like how would you find the word cause? Um, one thing one thing in itself leads to something else happening independent right. of, of other factors. Right. So what does leads to mean? Yeah, like that's actually yeah. Um, how to define uh, when it's like when it's like giving rise to something else. Like it's it's yeah. What does giving rise to mean? Like so, you're 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 plugging in synonyms here, right? You yeah, see, you see yeah. I, mean, I feel like cause is cause is kind of the word where you like cause is not a word that typically is people ask you to define. Yeah, but it's not a conceptual primitive. You know what a conceptual primitive is, right? Uh, no. A conceptual primitive is basically like a concept that can't be reduced any further. It's it, it's primitive. You try to reduce it, all oh, you okay. get is, all you get is circularity. Like it, like a equals a equals a. Like, but cause is not actually a conceptual primitive, but it is very difficult to define. Um, the definition of causality that's typically used in like the statistics literature is an antecedent state of affairs preceding a consequent state of affairs reliably, um, or something like that, right? So the three, the three core criteria that you need for a causal inference is um, an association, so the two variables need to associate with one another. You need a time precedence, meaning the one variable needs to precede the other, and you need replicability or non-spuriousness, which means you need to be able to observe this reliably over and over and over and over again. Now, prospective cohort studies have temporality, you can see the consistency of the association, and you can see that there is an association. It has all of the components necessary for a sound causal inference. Cross-sectional study doesn't. It doesn't have a temporal component. You literally can't disambiguate antecedent state of affairs from consequent state of affairs with a cross-sectional study. That's why I don't reference them. Right? So when you're saying I'm being inconsistent, it's not clear to me at all that I'm being inconsistent. Right? Yeah, no, it actually, it actually sounds like you're being consistent. Yeah, yeah I, okay, I cool. That so, yeah. Okay, oh, you can okay. take that back. Great, great. Yeah. So awesome. now we can get back to the actual discussion, which is what the hell's the evidence for the proposition? <laughs> Oh, we got another ad. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to be honest with you, I was looking more towards a conference, like not not. Yeah, I, I, well, I, mean, I I know that you had like an idea of where this conversation was going to go. I don't care yeah. about that. I don't care about that. This is where the conversation is because I think your error in reasoning is on a deeper level, right? So like, this is it's it's levels, right? So we have the level of philosophy. And then we have the level of epistemology, and then we have the level of scientific epistemology, and then we have the level of science, and then we have the level of information, which is like this study versus that study. You want to find out on this level, talking about this study versus that study. I'm dragging your ass down to the level of epistemology, where I know that you're going to be uncomfortable, because if you were comfortable there, you wouldn't believe the stuff that you believe, right? So this is a perfect place to drag you, <laughs> because you're not going to have any answers to these questions, as you, you demonstrated, right? So are you willing to concede the proposition at this point? No, because I, I believe it's true. No. Okay, so what's the evidence for it? I, I think my piece of evidence work together, right? Like, I don't know what that I, means. I, what does that mean? I, I think you, you, you pull them together and it seems to, and it, and it, and you, and you, and it makes sense. Like, you, yeah. No, because in, like, if you look at the individual... You know, we already went over this. You have to address the defeaters that were presented by Nick, which you haven't done. It's not clear that the actual evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than the negation of your hypothesis. And then when you aggregate them together, it's not going to be clear whether or not the aggregate is more expected on your hypothesis 
as opposed to the, the negation of the hypothesis. It's not doing any work for you by just saying, consider it together. You're, li you're You wound up in the exact same scenario, just saying, oh, let's consider them together. And that doesn't do any work for you, right? You need to actually yeah. provide some evidence that shows that like it's more expected on your hypothesis rather than the negation of your hypothesis. Which so doesn't seem evidence? to have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, I, I like, there's not really much more I could, I could say. I'm not going to conceive my point because I, I do. I, 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 mean, I, I think you're just being dishonest. I honestly just think you're just being dishonest, if that's the point. Yeah. Like, like if you're if you are not willing to concede the proposition for which you have no evidence, and it's a scientific it's a scientific hypothesis, you sign off on that, but it but it has no evidence, and you're not willing to concede it, that just sounds like dishonesty to me. How, 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 sounds how like dishonesty, dishonesty to me because as well. You don't have any evidence for your scientific hypothesis. So, so how so, is it a scientific hypothesis rather than just being a just so story? It's just a fairy tale. So, so yeah, but I'm kind of I'm kind of um confused by, by your, your usage of the word dishonest as in um like well, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. that you are dishonest I'm saying it seems like you're dishonest because if I were in your shoes I would just concede the proposition and say I'm not going to believe that anymore right. I don't know what the basis for belief is if you have no evidence right right so either you're like dishonest like you like it just seems like you're either dishonest or delusional or motivated or or a, like a zealot or some kind of ideologue like because if, if I was in your shoes I would just concede the prop and I wouldn't I would not believe it anymore because I don't have any evidence for it I can't render an argument for it I can't render the evidence for it so it's like what is it other than just like an assertion? It's just a fairy tale. I mean, the I mean, I could say the reason why I believe it is because of the results that I see. Like, and it's not something I can quantify. So, the, which is why it's kind of difficult. Like, I, I know what I see, and um, what do you see? I, Did he say it's not something I can quantify? I believe it is because of the results that I see. Like, and it's not something I can quantify. So, the. <laughs> <laughs> he he presented his hypothesis, and now he's claiming that 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 the evidence he sees is not something that can be quantified. Like that that sounds like nonsense. Why well, it's kind of difficult? Like I, I know what I see, and um, what do you see? I, I know. What does that mean? What do you, like what do you like? What do you mean? Like what are you referring like, to? Like how I see people's health improve when I do at least eighty percent meat, which is you know working within the confines of the claim. Sounds like we're going to anecdotes though. <laughs> Right, so like, you're not worried about selection bias there. That's probably the one scenario where selection bias would be most prevalent, right? Because the people that you're seeing do this, like, it's it's very clear that they're self-selecting to do it, and you're not going to see, you're not necessarily going to be more likely to see, or equally as likely to see, people who attempted to do it, and then didn't get those results, and then did something else, right? So the, mm -hmm. the, the selection bias and survivorship bias effects are probably going to be most, like, present with anecdotal evidence, like the evidence that you're giving. So that's certainly not clear why that would be more expected on your hypothesis, because I could have an alternate hypothesis. Maybe those people are benefiting because it's the first time in their life that they became truly cognizant of what they were eating, and that that's where the benefit came from. Because maybe, oh, they, maybe, maybe they lost weight. Maybe they were eating something that was bad for them, and removing it um, improved, their, improved their health to some degree. I like that, but that doesn't that doesn't offer support for the proposition. Yeah, I mean, it would... he really went to anecdotes, though. <laughs> I'm saying something I can't quantify. I just, I mean, you, you, I mean, you, you, you would easily say, well, yeah, it's a survivorship bias um, and, and things like that, uh, and it's selection bias. That's fine, but and, and, and also, seen, like, those, yeah. just just to be clear, like those anecdotes actually don't really interact with uh, the proposition because the pro the outcome, the independent vari or the dependent variable in the proposition is maximum longevity. The independent variable is this type of diet compared to that type of diet. Um, the dependent variable here, which is maximum longevity, is not seen in these anecdotes. Like you're not measuring longevity with the people that you're like talking to in Facebook groups and on Twitter and like you're, you're not doing you're not doing that. So like how oh, how oh. does that even qualify as evidence for the proposition? I mean, I would I mean like. It would seem to me that feeling better, being healthier, is a good marker for better longevity relative to feeling bad. Yeah, people feel people feel good all the time doing things that are bad for them. That's that's not revelatory to me. People do people do drugs oh, and feel good. And, like, people, feel, <laughs> people feel great when they do drugs and they get longevity detriments. People feel great when they drink alcohol and they get longevity de detriments. They feel great when they smoke and they get longevity detriments. Why should I accept that this is an instance where people are doing something feeling great and getting a longevity benefit? Even like, you're not measuring longevity. I have no I have no reason to accept this. Yeah, I mean you you don't need to accept it. Um, well, I'm open to being convinced, right? That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I don't know, Nick. I mean you're you're a very very you're much better debater than I am. I, I just think I'm. Um... <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> I don't know, Nick. You're a much better debater than I am. <laughs> like, I, 
I, I think when I when I look at the bigger picture, when I consider everything, it, this, this is what seems to make sense for me um, when when trying to measure longevity and also I mean, there's people who live a very very long time eating meat. It would it seems like, from my understanding, um, they're like Greek philosophers who lived well into their hundreds, eating mostly meat. I, I don't think humans died at age thirty or twenty five. I think we died much older than that. Um, and, and there's I've seen some people talk about that. Like I, I just and none of this stuff you would you would. Um, Give credence to it's just well they just seem like assertions like i, I have no idea but like the, th the thing is like again we're kind of back in this in this area in this uh if we're back dealing with something that i feel like i've already addressed which is like you're trying to aggregate all of these things together but the thing is that e each one of each piece of evidence that you're putting on the table it's not clear why they're more expected on your hypothesis so in aggregate you're just gonna have the same problem right so like greek philosophers living into their hundreds and eating meats well maybe they were living into their hundreds due to some other variable like maybe maybe a religiosity has something to do with this like maybe a survivorship bias effect has something to do with it because they also encountered the infants and child mortality problems right so it's not clear that the diet it's not clear exactly what effect if any the diet is having on their longevity necessarily well, yeah I, just 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 from what i've seen in people who eat less than 20 percent meat or just even much less than 20 percent meat very little meat seem to be very very unhealthy and not do very well this is just from what i've observed and you know are you collecting data about like death records or something <laughs> <laughs> again your anecdotes aren't supportive of the claim that longevity <laughs> there's longevity benefits i mean dude come on <laughs> so that seen in the past. yeah so like if you're not collecting that sort of data then it doesn't interact with the proposition <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, yeah, I don't really have much more I feel like we need to talk about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Crashing and burning. <laughs> this is so bad. I mean, but, but you're not willing to concede the proposition though, right? No, because uh, I believe it's true. I, mean, I believe, what, what's the, you know, ah. Just try really hard, man. Like, bear with me. Ooh. What is the source of the belief? This is what happens when I you think, um, when you're an idiot. You make a nutritional change and you feel better from it, and the only thing that you changed was the food you eat. You consistently feel better. That research shows people remember commercials. We got more ads. Sorry about that, y'all. better from it and the only thing that you changed was the food you eat and you consistently feel better then i think that that is a good uh marker for having better longevity i don't think feeling bad like with a certain diet and then i think feeling bad is going to produce more longevity than feeling good all, all, all the factors aside well, I mean, you're certainly not in a position to say that you, that you're observing all of the factors aside. I mean, just it, it initially, like what you said, like if all you did was change your diet, that entails like probably like it's somewhere around a hundred different changes if you're going to something that approximates a carnivore diet. Because you're, you, people people typically eat varied diets of like tens of hundreds of different things, and if all of a sudden you replace all of those things with meat, you're making hundreds of tens of tens or hundreds of substitutions, right? So it's not clear to me, like, if it was just the substitution of one of those things that had the effect and the meat is kind of here, here or there, and if you would have gone on a similar diet without that meat and just replaced that one thing anyway, you would have seen the exact same result. It's not clear to me that that's what's going on, and additionally, because you're not collecting, like, death record data, it's not clear that it interacts with the proposition. So when you say, like, I'm making these observations about the way people live or, like, what people are doing and it seems to, like, work for them or whatever, um, it's not clear to me that that is actually evidence for the proposition because the proposition, the dependent variable of the interest in the proposition is maximum longevity. I don't think these are measurements of longevity. Like feeling great, we go back to drugs. Drugs are not a measure. Feeling great from drugs is not a measurement of longevity. Feeling great from smoking, feeling great from shooting opium, th those are not measurements of longevity, right? So I don't know why it would be a, longe a measurement of longevity in this case. You need to provide an argument for that. Well, it would be having I mean, consistent energy levels, better sleep, like all these things would be good market. Like if a diet, in itself, only changing the diet, and I, I, I hear you, like you're making a ton of substitutions, so on and so forth, but if you're just changing your diet, like, you're making substitutions, but all you're changing is within the diet, and you feel significantly better, better sleep, everything that I mentioned, then, I mean, I, I would think, I would think any reasonable person would agree that this is it's a, uh, a recipe for longevity. Well, not necessarily. Sorry, you guys can't I mean, see the video. Because, I mean, we have, we have tons of drugs that interact with sleep. We have tons of drugs that interact with, like, your stamina and your alertness and your, like, wakefulness throughout the day. We have tons of drugs that interact with those that probably interact with longevity in a negative way, too. I mean, 
if I scour the literature hard enough, I'm pretty sure I could find something. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of drugs that, <laughs> that we have at our disposal. I mean, I could find instantiations of where these things haven't held true and just ask you to provide an argument for why they hold true in this case. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say there isn't much... So I feel like there's much common sense in, in your arguments, and the, the, like I said, you say them really nicely, but I don't think they actually make any sense. Um, wait, 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 what do you mean like, by not make any sense? Just to be clear, what do you mean by that? Not make any sense? Does that mean that, like, they just don't jive with your intuitions, or do you think I've, I'm li I've literally asserted the contradiction? No, I, I don't think you've asserted the contradiction. I think they don't, they don't make sense instinctually at all. Oh, so, oh, they, so they, they, they don't. They, they're just, like, not in accord with your intuitions? Right. Who cares? <laughs> um, that, that's part of... The problem right yeah. that just sounds like another appeal from incredulity that's a fallacy i'm not going to find that particular <laughs> unless you can find yeah. an actual, yeah. actual error with my arguments I'm, I'm not trying to persuade you I, yeah well i'm open to persuasion i mean like you came here to debate why did you come here to debate if you're not like here to try to persuade me i'm mean, <laughs> just trying to i wasn't really trying to do a whole debate like like a thing exactly like this um <laughs> i bet you weren't hoping that debate. it would go exactly <laughs> <laughs> Since I wasn't hoping to do a debate exactly like this, like <laughs> I bet you weren't, dude. I I bet you weren't. Nobody wants to get wrecked that hard. Like, woo. It's gonna be coming. Like, it's like, I probably should have because last because because last time we talked, it was more like they said we're just trying to yeah. talk. But yeah, that's what I mean. It's fine. This is my arena, and this is how we play in my arena. Yeah. So like, fine. if, if you're if you're not if you're not prepared to get on my level, then I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you can you can happily take the L and and, and leave. That's fine. Um, I would prefer, though, that you concede the proposition, because I think that would be the honest thing to do. I'm not going to concede the proposition, because I believe it to be true. And it's not just, and like, and you don't like have I'm doing it myself, like, I'm, I'm, true. I'm doing this because, I'm eating at least 80% of me because I want to live a long time, because yeah. that's what I've, so but, like, but, I'm not going to concede it, because I still believe it. But wait, 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 but none of the reasons that you've given me for forming the belief are actually things that are clear to me should increase the credence in the belief. Like, you're talking about people getting benefits. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? Like, you're talking about people feeling good. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? The, the, like, those, those things are decoupled, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're saying that, like, they're coupled somehow, you have to provide an argument for that. Yeah, like, I, I think I'm just, I think let's just, let's just call it, because I, you know, like, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm not, no, I'm not, I mean, like, you, you, you're going to have to leave, right? Like, you're going to have to leave the call, because I'm not letting you off the hook. I want a concession on the proposition, because you couldn't defend it. I'm not, I'm not going to concede the proposition. Like, well, then you're going to have to leave the call. I'm not leaving. I want a, pro I want a concession on the proposition, because you couldn't defend it. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it. That's fine. Okay. I mean... All right. All right. See you. Recording stopped. Oh. Oh. oh, man. Wow. Yeah. That was... That was brutal. That was... <laughs> <laughs> oh man carnivore camaraderie got absolutely flogged i mean that was he was trounced beyond recognition that was that was really bad <laughs> so yeah uh overall um amazing performance from nick in the debate um i was super super impressed by that um, loved the way that he stayed on point the entire time and pushed for a concession at the end. Um, perfect. Like, that's exactly how I would expect a skilled debater to go about a debate. And, uh, yeah, um, that was, that was a major L for the carnivore side. And he knew it, too. He knew it. That's why he tried so hard to get it taken down, because he didn't want that embarrassment up on the internet and... Who can blame him? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't want to, after being absolutely just demolished like that, I would not want it to be up on the internet either. But I mean, to, to be truthful, as long as I'm not making claims that are outright dangerous, I'm willing to air out my mistakes for the world to see. But like, yeah, yikes. Big yikes. Uh, I can see why this debate has uh, gained so much infamy. Uh, and, you know, it's actually due to the fact that, um, that Carnivore Camaraderie tried so hard to censor the debate, you know? It may, like, like Nick was mentioning this on his stream today, is that, like, once uh, the debate was, was attempted to be suppressed, all the people who were kind of noticing on the periphery that weren't, that weren't that interested were all of a sudden going, wait a minute. What the heck is going on here? Everybody's talking about this debate. The the debate opponent tried to get the debate taken down after full consent was given. 
Like, <laughs> it looks really bad, and it is. It's terrible. But yeah, so uh, that was a treat. Uh, that was great. Uh, hopefully we'll have more awesome debates in the future, although it's, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you have to wonder who in the carnivore community would want to step up, <laughs> step up to the plate after uh, taking a loss that hard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's great all right well thank you guys so much uh that was awesome and uh yeah i will see you in the next one and uh much love to all of you hope you have a great rest of your day or night or whatever time it is and uh yeah i will see you around peace out if you want to check then you gotta keep your space i'm gonna take another shot drop the album did it Flop, flow contagious, chicken pox Got too many songs to drop Never gonna stop, never gonna stop Going to the top, Kobe with the shot Cooking like a pop, yeah this is hot Popping like a kernel, I was never tired